Just getting the word that your shares indicated to price at $125 to $130 a share, even higher uh, than the pricing yesterday. I just want to give you a moment to react to that. Did you ever think that DoorDash would be a $46 billion company? Well, certainly when I was delivering hummus for my Honda, Emily, that, that, seven years earlier, that this wasn't exactly what I was thinking about when I was in my car making those deliveries. So it, it certainly is surreal. Um, but I think it really is a testament to the hard work uh, of all of the people inside the walls of DoorDash, as well as the partnership with our ecosystem, our merchants, the dashers on our platform, everyone outside of our four walls for the past seven years, as well as a reflection of the confidence that investors have about our future. Given that you were valued at $16 billion back in June, what is your case to investors that you are now worth well more than double that, especially out of a pandemic? Well, I think the opportunity at DoorDash is just so early. And I've always been much more focused on chasing customers and chasing excellence versus chasing the scoreboard. And I think, you know, as a public company now, I, I think um, many investors, frankly, any investor can certainly, um, you know, have their uh, turn at valuing the company. But I think what we saw in terms of the strong demand during the IPO process was I think both a testament to the strong underlying business that we've built today, as well as an appreciation for what it can become in the future. I mean, if you think about DoorDash, one half of our goal is building the largest local commerce marketplace in which we're bringing everything inside your city to you in minutes, not hours, or in days. And the other part of our goal is to make sure that we can take the products we've built for our marketplace and give them to merchants in the form of ordering as a service logistics as a service so that they can build an end-to-end -end technology solution just like we have for ourselves so that they can serve their own customers and compete in today's convenience economy. Now, you own 50% of the market, but you do face rapidly changing competition, consolidating competition. What are you doing differently than your peers? Why are you seeing this outsized growth? Our, our growth really comes from the fact that we always obsess over building a superior product. And I think that can be revealed in a lot of the industry leading retention um, metrics that are available um, and, and studied by analysts. You know, for us, it's really offering consumers an unmatched combination of the selection of restaurants we bring, the quality of the delivery experience itself, as well as the affordability of the service that have allowed us to grow largely from our existing customers and therefore um, have a lot more ability to invest and reinvest in acquiring new customers, as well as building new products, as well as entering new geographies. So it really starts with having built a superior product. That superior product is what also has allowed us to build a massive scale advantage, which is key in a network-based business like logistics. And finally, we've achieved superior unit economics, both through operating our operational excellence and just getting waste out of the system, as well as um, winning uh, parts of the industry, such as the suburbs, which are not only the biggest part of the industry, the fastest growing part of the industry, but also the most profitable part of the industry. Right. And you, you definitely sort of colonized the suburbs early on. So if you have 50% of the market now, what is your outlook? What will your market share be in a year? What will your market share be in five years? Well, we don't chase market share at DoorDash. We chase excellence and we chase the customer. We have a lot of work to do. I mean, today we are privileged to serve 390,000 merchants every month, um, 18 million monthly active consumers, and over a million dashers. But that, those statistics, they're, they're averages. They're not distributed uniformly. There may be certain neighborhoods where we should offer you more selection. We should get faster. We should be more affordable. So we have a long ways to go. But to me, it's always been making sure and reminding all of our teams that if we can master the inputs, that then the score will take care of itself. Now, look, growth has surged in the pandemic, but a vaccine is around the corner. When we get a vaccine, even you, the company, in your risk factor say growth is likely to slow. How much do you think growth will slow? Well, let me start by saying that I, I wish a vaccine were here, Emily. I really wish that we could be celebrating as a team inside of a restaurant or inside you know, many of the fantastic local businesses that we're privileged to partner with across this country. 
Uh, and you know, the way I've, I've always thought about um, the, the business is I've really thought about just how early we are. Only 10% of restaurant sales are being delivered today. The vast majority, 90 plus percent of the industry still happens through a non-digital channel, through a phone call, through a pickup order, through a drive-through. And so if you think about what's happening, I mean, we're playing in one of the biggest yet still most underpenetrated industries in the world that's moving online very quickly where a lot of these uh, physical experiences are now becoming digitized into e-commerce experiences. And we're playing our role in both growing the industry by bringing in customers for the first time, as well as empowering these businesses to have the same tools that we and others have so that they can compete on their own. Now, all of that said, so many restaurants are struggling. DoorDash commissions can be as high as 30% of an order. I know that you're bringing in new business, you're bringing them new customers that they may never have had before, but they say that they are getting crushed, many of them. You know, what are the chances that as you scale, you can bring commissions down? Well, look, uh, it certainly is a very tough time for restaurants. And, and, and for us, our mission is to transform brick and mortar businesses like the local Chinese restaurant where I grew up as a dishwasher. So I've I, I certainly understand how difficult these times are and never have I seen anything more difficult in the past three decades for the industry. And that's why we were the only platform to have cut our commissions by 50% and investment over $100 million at the onset of this pandemic. It's why we built commission-free products such as DoorDash Drive as, as well as DoorDash Storefront so that restaurants can get their own customers through their own channels. But I also want to make sure that we understand that there is a cost in, in what we do. I mean, when you're trying to bring an industry online for the very first time, you have to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in marketing to do that. You have to invest billions of dollars so that we can pay for the incremental earnings opportunities that we provide millions of dashers, so many of whom really need these opportunities during a pandemic. You have to pay for payment processing and customer support. And that's why we're very proud of the investments that we've made that have allowed restaurants on DoorDash to have six times the odds of surviving the pandemic than the average restaurant in the industry. Now, what about the regulatory headwinds? Prop 22 did pass in California, meaning you don't have to reclassify gig workers as employee, but this could end up being a battle in other states. You also have cities out there that are trying to put caps on the commissions that you take. Are these kinds of regulatory issues something that you think the food delivery business is gonna to have to deal with forever? Well, if you think about Prop 22, Prop 22 was a win for dashers. That's the most important outcome that came from Prop 22. And it really was trying to solve for two principles that we have been fighting for at DoorDash for our entire history and, and certainly will be continuing to commit um, our resources behind. You know, the first is making sure that the dashers on our platform can have the same flexibility that really no one else offers and, and continuing in that process where work is, you know, um, paying off and, and surrounding our life as opposed to the other way around. And then second, that we can give the dashers the protections and the security that they deserve. And I think really that's what Prop 22 really stands for. And I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, by a wide margin, 59 to 41, citizens in California on both sides of the aisle in the most progressive state of California in this country uh, vouched for it. And so we are now working with elected officials across all levels in all parts of the country to really try to take a lot of the principles behind Prop 22 and create a uniform standard where we're developing a third way of work.